All right, Elric. Yes. You, the Crate Phantom, and the new demon child, Isisu, have wandered into this room. There is a golden guard, another golden knight, standing amidst a pile of rocks. More interesting, there is a lot of large chunks of quite glittering rocks that are literally floating about the room, kind of gravitating in a circular motion, some fast, some slow. All right. Isisu uh, let's see. is mesmerized and is instantly going to start running around the room. All right. Uh, let's see. First and foremost, since the, this, can I roll? Uh, what? L l let me see my skills. I want to say perception just on the room itself first. Yes. Go ahead just to analyze if there's any threats. Uh, let's see. And that's an 8. Uh, let's see, do I, do I have a bonus? I'll tell you, if you were looking for traps, you don't think there's a trap in here. Because there is literally rocks covering the floor in quite a messy pattern. Perception should, is plus 5. Eight. I shouldn't say pattern, I apologize. Just, there's rocks covering the floor everywhere. Right. So actually, my score is 13. Alright. Would help if I turned off my puzzle solution page to my skills page. You still don't believe there's a trap of any kind. Okay. But you can tell by the way all these rocks are kind of moving about. They are seeming to kind of be rotating around an axis around the middle of the room about here. All right. Kind of over it's the largest of the pile of rocks. Then I'd like to scope it out. Using okay. the, uh, well, the scope. Alright, the camera, the spyglass? Yes. Alright. Um, do you look anywhere in particular? Uh, the, the center of the pile. Okay. You look through the spyglass, and the room looks about the same as it is right now. There are the floating rocks and this, you know, mound of rocks. The Golden Knight is missing, but more interestingly, you do see... Um, a few other golden knights that seem to be stacking up these rocks in this pile of some sort. It looks a little bit more organized than it does currently. Almost like they're making essentially like a rock pyramid. It's not perfect, but it, they're certainly using slabs instead of just chunks and regular old, uh, bits of rock anywhere. But you sure enough can see rocks kind of gravitating around this center focal point. Nothing else mm -hmm. new on the walls, nothing on the ceiling, nothing else much of change. But that is what you view through the spyglass. Okay. <clears throat> well, since this doesn't seem to be a uh, particularly threatening room... What makes I them float? Great Phantom's going to ask. It's probably something in the center of the room in that pile. Maybe it's the pile itself. It's going to reach up and try and touch one of the rocks. As it touches it, it kind of wobbles in place, but still continues its little orbit. Isisu <laughs> is, like, grasping at pebbles over here in the corner. Like a child after a butterfly or something. Hmm. Uh, I'd like to try and take this opportunity to um, just take stock of everything. Okay. Not not take stock, but like Inventory? it's a uh, investigate my items so far. See how everyone's doing. Uh -huh. Like a, a restroom while they're okay. Um, you're down like five health or so. You easily get back up. I'll give that to you. Okay. As you kind of attend to yourself, Great Phantom draws your attention, and you look up to notice he's figured something out. He kind of draws your attention to it. He's wandered over to this golden knight. The knight is staring off at the opposite wall. It has, you know, done its little crystal light blippers and has identified you 
when you first came in the room, but it hasn't really talked or said anything like a lot of the other ones. You notice that Crate Phantom has gotten your attention, and he's pulled a few of these rocks off of the floor, some pebbles, uh, small in nature, you know, smaller than a golf ball. Mm -hmm. And you can see him kind of picking them up about near the knight's arm, and he'll let go, and the rock immediately attaches to the knight. And he's literally covering this knight slowly with bit by bit of rock. I think they're magnetic. That's... Hmm. That's... The knights? The knights are magnetic? No, I think the rocks are magnetic. The knights are metal. Hold huh. This, this whole place is metal, he says, stamping the floor again. That's different. That's very different. Great Phantom's actually gonna try and grab this large chunk of rock that's floating just about overhead. It's about your eye level. He's gonna try and just kind of jump up and grab and hang on to it. You know what? What the heck? With the five, he misses. He's gonna try and grab the rock. It's just out of his reach. Oh. Hmm. So if these are magnetic rocks, then either the center of the... This is me meta-sciencing. Then either the center of the room, which is full of the, a big pile of magnetic rocks, is probably causing some form of magnetic field, or they're trying to attach themselves to the walls. But that's highly unlikely, considering they're magnetic. They would just go to the nearest. Uh, so probably the center pile of rocks is causing some form of magnetic field to form within this room, which is probably also why that knight is stuck close to the pile of rocks. Nifty. Great Phantom rolls a four and can't grab this rock he's aiming for. Uh, let's see. The Great Phantom will actively stop at one point and then kind of look over to the demon child and notice she's, like, made this large collection of rocks kind of in mid-air. She's, like, making this big rock ball. It'll actively look back to you for a second. So... Did we ever figure anything out about, uh, he kind of points over towards the child? You had, like, a whole thing in that last room over yonder with the shapes. Well, all, all I was able to get out of, uh... That wall, the, the muse, uh, her name is Isasu. Uh, she is the daughter of a big demon. Okay, that's kind of bad. I guess. Yeah, kind of, kind of bad, but hopefully if we return her to... Her mother, she won't be too mad. I mean, hmm. just trying to think mother's instincts here type of thing. Right. But what? other than that, I got cut off. What What you making over there? He's going to kind of shout over to the child. She is not responded at all. She's still sitting here making, like, little rock balls, little configurations and shapes. Oh, I can slightly hear my echo now, but it's not annoying. Well, I can turn it down just a little bit. Alright. Great Phantom's gonna kind of 
ask up again. What what you got? Like he's trying. Mm hmm. Is it is something? Is she okay? I'll go over there. I mean, I know a thing or two about kids, but you wander over. She's literally making this huge. <clears throat> Like, uh, somewhat of a rock snowman, kind of in midair. She's trying to find all the pebbles and make some sort of figure or stick person of some kind. She's having a blast. Uh, you see her light up, kind of, her attention, oh, like wide-eyed as she as you kind of come into her view, and she looks at you and has noticed you were here, kind of. Gives draw and shows attention. Like, look what I'm making. You're doing a good job. What is it? She kind of stops and looks at it. She'll tilt her head sideways. I don't know. As she continues making more of it. Great Phantom just kind of tries to catch your eyes over her shoulder and looks kind of like eh? I want to roll perception okay or in yeah it, perception because I'll get a better bonus for that uh, 16 okay um, you know what that's that's perfect you've got an inkling right now that you think you know why she's essentially been ignoring you at times. This isn't like a n what a normal child would do, especially not in this, uh, so to speak, extreme. Especially since she just downright ignored the crate phantom like that without any flinch. You might have an inkling that she might have a hearing disability. That's your, that's your theory right now, but that would make sense as she's kind of just ignored you when she wasn't looking at you. But then when you're right there, she's as normal as a demon child could be. Now I just chalk that up to kids being kids if they're too preoccupied. Huh. Can I just straight up ask her, do you can you hear things okay? It takes her about half a second after the words trail off your lips and she kinda nods and she kinda does like the whole hand motion like I'm watching you. She says, When I see people Ah okay. She's a lip reader. Great Phantom's going to kind of waddle over a little bit and ask you, Elric, um, I don't mean to bother, but, uh, do, do we, like, have to take care of her or something? I don't really know how to take care of a demon child. Mm. Is, is she allergic to anything? Are, are you allergic to anything? We'll tap on her shoulder. She'll kind of half jump and turn around to see this big chest with teeth and kind of jump back a little bit. Well, maybe that's why she spooked, from, spooked with him. She, she can't read his lips. He doesn't have lips. Uh, I, I calm her down and say it's just the crate phantom again. He's kind of like half clutched onto your, like 
one of your little side cloaks, your belt or something, but she's not exactly hiding behind you. Yeah. She has a couple questions. Uh, I want to uh, speak as a go-between so his questions get answered. Okay. Um, the crate phantom mulls it over for a second. It... Just ask her if there's any, like, problems or anything we need to know of, I guess. If she can't hear well, I think that should have been a thing we should have known about. Right. Well, I relay that question. You see her think, but she shakes her head no. Well... Okay. Yes. Doesn't hurt to ask. No, it doesn't hurt to ask at all. Okay, so... I figured it out. And I think if we just double back, we can put these other three puzzles together and we can get into whatever this big door is. I let Isasu know what the Create Phantom just said, and I agree with... I, I state that I agree with him. Hmm. Does she have a problem with it? Shake your head no. She's then kinda... let's... Go ahead. Then let's, uh... Double back. After... I, I want to, uh... It just came to my mind. I want to... Double check the properties of the... Like, roll perception on the golden gloves and the star stone. Certainly. Respectively. Re respectively. What, are you going to start doing perception on all your items now? It... Well, no, just... Maybe. <laughs> okay, uh... Roll for the gloves. For the gloves, I have a 15. Alright, they are, in fact, um, forged out of the same material that the this dungeon is made out of, the same golden material. Um, you, you're pretty certain it's gold, but you have an inkling that there's a slight, there's another compound or two in there mixed in. Very slight, but it's mostly gold. Um, there's no legitimate magic or any imbuements, they're just a pair of golden gloves. Maybe, like, tailored, someone's specific tailored gloves, but nothing magic or else to it. Okay. Uh, Ornamental, essentially. Yes. Uh, just begs the question, why would they put up in the cage? Okay, for the rock? Uh, yes, and now for the rock. Ooh, that's nice. 15 plus 5 is 20. Ooh, okay. So, Crate Phantom kind of sidles up this brass cage he's been holding on to that has this cosmic rock about the size of a basketball that you just liberated. And you really stare at it into the inky blackness of its darkness to the bright shimmering star lights that it uh, illuminates. And... You realize that you notice a star configuration, a constellation that you are certainly familiar with. Volans, uh, otherwise known as the Flying Fish, you recognize. It's literally like you had copy and pasted or cut this piece of the night sky out and put it into this rock. It's undeniably, this is the legitimate night sky. Or at least a copy of it of some kind. Um, you knew that the... Well, you know that when draped a cloth over it, the cloth began to smoke. You do not believe that this rock is now hot. Upon further investigation, you actually believe this rock has another property of some kind. You can't figure out what it is, but it's got legitimately a power that is 
not known. Something quite mysterious. It holds further mysteries for sure. Oh, it's one of the fallen stars. This is what that was. And who now? I bring out the Book of Legends. You do not have it, but you wrote everything down, I'm sure. Yeah, I did. The copy of the Book of Legends. And that this was a, uh... Stars that fell to Earth from the night sky. That's that's this. Hmm. Huh. Makes sense. Shiny. Valuable and powerful. Hmm. Huh. Just wish we had a better way to carry it. He glares at you for that comment. I'm not talking about you. Okay, then. Uh, I think that's enough item investigation. Let's uh, double back. Great Phantom's going to suggest this door here, since it's one you have not opened yet. But you're pretty sure oh. it leads to the same room. Yeah. Open away. He's got his hands full at the moment. He kind of looks at you. Turn, like, sense to the side, like, go ahead. Yep. Open you sesame. You slap the little diamond-like door handle mechanism, as always. Opens up to a short little hallway. Ooh, my apologies. And just as expected, the other door on the opposite side. All right. And you're back in the telescope room. Yes. Uh, let's see. You know, why don't we leave the Star Rock here temporarily? We'll come back for it. Mm. There's other things in here. What if we... I don't know. Great Phantom kind of stops mid-thought. I mean, I've got it. I don't mind holding it. I just want to make sure that, uh, in case of emergency, your combat arms are free. Oh, oh, okay. We will go over and gently sit down the cage, kind of where the rock was free floating in the star field prior. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. Through the door. All right, you want to enter back into the room with the collapsed ceiling and the altar. Yep. And that is one of those puzzle rooms in the next in the next room. So we go through, right? And All then right. stop. Stop right here. Or oh, actually, let me get everyone in here. You're back into puzzle room. And I had to do it prior, so I apologize. The shield puzzle, Elric, is in a different configuration than you left it. Oh dear. Wait, uh, wasn't. Great Phantom kind of draws attention. But. I could have sworn that. You're, you're not wrong. Someone else must have come through here. The question is, who or what? Something 
smart enough to push shields into a configuration that is equally correct. Ah, so a very smart rat. I knew it. He kind of slams his fist into his hand. Yeah, quite possibly. Your attention is drawn as this door on the far side opens up. Clanking into the room is another metallic guard. One of the mismatched patchwork ones with the different colored armor and it's got writing all over it. It's quite a distance, but it looks similar to the one you saw in the wood room. They began chopping up the logs. It immediately steps in as the door shuts behind it, and it looks frail. It's kind of, even when it idles for like half a second, you can tell it's either shaking or maybe something isn't sitting right. It's not still. A small little blue light is kind of emanating from its visor, much similar to the other guards, and it seems to slowly kind of turn in your direction. Oh, hey! Guest! Wonderful! How are you guys? It will attempt to quickly come over to you, but stop about right here as it kind of half shuffles and limps. It's certainly not stable by any means. Welcome, welcome! Please, come join us! Uh, tea, uh, food, uh, merriment, yes, wonderful! H how can I help you? A somewhat aged voice, but cheerful nonetheless, em emanates from this knight, this suit. Uh, we're simply exploring. We're trying to get into the room that's behind, uh, behind these puzzle doors, and we're just on our way to solve the other two. Ah! Oh! Hey! Wait! Wonderful! Ah! Uh, <laughs> door! This door? It'll point to the large door that is the puzzle door. Yes. Ha! Ah! Ah! No! It forcibly kind of says. Okay. Uh, step, step. Is there something behind it that shouldn't be let, let out or something? Yes. There's th my stuff behind there. A lot of things that I don't want people to touch. Ha ha. Ha ha. You'll get a tug from your right side. Crate phantom tugs on you. This one's weird. This one's fibbing to us. It'll take about another good step, kind of really trying to get a good look at you, its head, as its helmet, its head kind of looks around at the three of you. Um, Hilbert, would you like to roll perception real quick? I would love to roll perception. Please roll perception. I have 9 plus 5 is 14. Alright, 14 is good enough. You do notice that this suit does have, like, its parts label. And upon further investigation, uh, unless it's an exact replica, this would be the same suit you saw in the previous room. The wood chopper one. And there's a... You know, there's, it's like, all of its parts are labeled. It's very rusted. It's very poorly put together. There's some dings in this one. Not shiny and nice like the other Golden Guards. As well as there is a large uh, word printed in some sort of dwarven font that appears to be upside down on its torso. Can I make it out? Yes. It is upside down, but it says Mazis. Hmm.
No, that can't be it. T. That's cr that's crumpets. Any anyone? Kind of twitches a bit. Um. No, thank you. I think we'll just be on our way. But your offer is greatly appreciated. Kind of just stands there shaking and clattering metal. Let's get going this way. I start walking around the guy. Okay, hang on. Hold on. Hanging on, sorry. Crate Phantom's not going to move. Are you going to step in front of him, like, going this way? No, I was going to usher everyone around the edge. Ah, okay. Um, so, like, you've got them literally holding their hands? Yeah, pretty much. Kind of like, you know, everyone shuffle to the side. It's like, okay. Don't stare, at, don't stare at the man. Let's go. Okay, you get about, like, one square. You get about five feet. This thing kind of looks at you... And it chimes up again. Y you, tall one, you were here earlier. You were exploring. Yes, exploring. You, why are you really here? We're still just exploring. Exploring, exploring, exploring. Kind of almost violently twitches its helmet to the side. You're here to steal my things like everybody else, aren't you? No, not in the least. Then what are you exploring? There is supposed to be some form of major event. And I wanted to be a part of it. You will not be a part of it. Also, there is an individual here trying to... take this particular king's throne. At the mention of the word king, you see it react in some way to that specific word. You are here. You know about things. It will tromp right directly over towards you and literally shove itself between you and the crate phantom. Pull a 180 and do one of those parent death grips on your shoulder as well as legitimately, like, palm the crate phantom on his lid. Um, and literally begin to just forcibly start walking, trying to drag you guys in tow. Uh, is there... I want to try and, uh... Can I try and counter him? What would you like to do? Kind of like... Nah, what's the word? Like, dodge before it grabs you? No, I want to, like... He stuck his arm on my shoulder. I would like to try and flip him. Okay. Um, let's see. That would be straight up strength. Okay. This is a suit of armor, as far as you can gather from its outwards appearance. First off, go ahead and I apologize. Roll me uh, I'll need either a performance or an acrobatics, whichever one will further benefit. Uh, they are equal. Okay. So let's see. <clears throat> That is a 12 plus 3, 15. Okay. 
Now roll me a strength. Please be good. Please be good. That is a 13 minus 1 is 12. All right. You manage to wrap your arm kind of around his like you're going to flip him over backwards, like make this suit of armor do a backflip. And you give it your all and kind of just effectively, if it were a real person, snap his arm in half or the wrong way. You hear quite a grind of metal and an unpleasant snap or two as you bend its arm in the opposite direction as it was grabbing you, but this thing does not budge. And it doesn't seem to even really react to that, but it's still got this, like, death grip on your shoulder. Okay... Isasu is just holding on to you, kind of just tagging along. She's not really dragging her feet, but you can tell she's, like, probably the the two of you, not really wanting to go. As this thing is literally dragging slash guiding you to this door it came out of. The Crate Phantom is shooting you, looks like I don't know what to do. As he's literally being carried. I, I... Let's just go with it. Without touching the door, nor letting go of you two, this door opens. And you are drug in. You are met with an open room. This one's filled with rats. Another scroll or two. Another pulley system with a brass cage. As soon as you enter the room, Elric, you see tons of rats, and they literally crowd and swarm over the three of you, or the four of you. This knight will legitimately tromp through without giving two Fs about any rats, almost stepping on a few of them. I picked up a scroll. And it is continuing like it's got a mission. Oh dear. Are the rats okay? No, no rat was stepped on. But they, they're like swarming you. Like, what's going on? What, what is this? Things. Things to look. Things to... Isisu seems interested, but more... I'm being drugged. Okay. You're ushered towards an archway. Let me highlight the doors, just so you saw. There were other doors in here. You're ushered through an archway, and you're immediately in another room that was similar to the study. Papers everywhere. Bookshelves. A large pylon in the middle of the room. This room is legitimately covered wall-to-wall -wall in papers, more so than the study. It's about halfway in the room... He literally tosses the crate phantom about in front of him. He lands on his feet. And he kind of shoves you forward a little bit, but lets go of this death grip. And takes about a step back. You now see this mess of a room. It's quite legitimately. If you want to explore, this is the thing to explore. Here are my secrets figure them out, and leave. I have nothing else to hide. I want to do what I want to do, and I will not have anyone impede me from my work. Then I thank you very much. You can see there are desks covered in papers, books all over the place, like that whole cliched um, crime investigation where someone's like plastered the wall with the, with the notes and the clues and they tallied everything together with the big lines, like it's all coming together. Mm -hmm. There's about several of these all over the room and they all appear to be 
organized into like the room be a mess, but there are like clusters, right, of notes. Uh, can we in- begin an investigation? Certainly. Okay. I want to roll flat, well, a perception, I guess, or investigation roll. Well, just tell me what you want to look at first. I want to or see Or what you want to do, I apologize. I want to see if there's anything about the Star Rock. All right. Okay, so you just kind of want to, like, browse the room for kind of like things in particular? You're not looking at anything, like any pile in particular or anything? No, I just want to try and get a sense of the important bits. Okay, uh, then just give me just a perception, just a standard perception. Sixteen. Okay. You spin around the room a few times and you begin to unfold that all of these piles of these notes, these plans, as one of the scrolls is obviously showing, that these are legitimately tactics of some kind. There are widespread notes on all sorts of these ideas, but you can kind of gather the gist of most of these about some odd arrays of plans. There's a pile that talks about some sort of hell spawn cows and incubation processes. There's a big collection about breeding some sort of hellhound army for fuel. There's a huge portion on the wall pinned up about four monster eggs and a ritual from druids of some kind. There's mentions of golems and pods and dungeons all linking back to fuel sources, fuel sources, fuel sources. And the other thing that catches your eye is this big empty section of the wall over here with three scrawls of figures. What appear to be a dwarf, a human or a half-elf of some kind, and some sort of dragonborn. The dwarf and the dragonborn are etched out, and the half-elf or the human, the middle figure, is circled very, very heavily. Okay. I know what that is. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> is the uh, knight still here? Yes, this patchwork knight has not really said or done anything. It's kind of stepped back and just twitched every now and again. Everything here seems to be about fuel. What are you trying to fuel? I am fueling Taurus. I need fuel. It feeds on organic matter. I need to be whole again. Okay. And what about these three people over here? The half-elf is last. They were problems to my plans. I wanted to make a fuel source. I didn't want to cut down trees. I wanted to make a new fuel source. It stomps over and begins going through several papers on this various desk over here. Hellhounds. 
monsters, potential demons, scourge from the world to be used as fuel instead of trees. But they got in the way. They got in the way. They messed up my plans. They got in the way. 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 It snaps violently to the side again. I need a fuel source. These two are dead. This last one is hopefully dead. But they are no longer in my way. But my plans are failing, and I need fuel. It turns around, kind of, very eerily, kind of walks in your direction with its weird little limp swagger thing. So I cut down the trees. I need organic fuel. I need organic fuel. I need to be whole again. I miss, I miss my body. It'll stand right next to the pylon, and you see the pylon kind of arc off some electricity kind of between it and the metallic figure before you. Great Phantom's going to kind of step over away from it. I think he's lost it. I'm, sa I'm actually sad for Mazis. Oh, man. <laughs> oh boy. I I don't know what to say. I need fuel to feed Taurus. Once I find how the transformation can be reversed, I can reverse the problem. Is there any way we might be able to help you? I need fuel and time. The stones are unpredictable. What does he mean about his body? Great Phantom's going to whisper at you. I think that each of those Robot Knight guard things and these, it, I think, like, you are in a crate. He is in the stones. If that makes sense to you. Uh, it, sure. Um, he scratches lid. Ooh, ooh, your, your thing! He, like, shaping his hands in the form of, like, a telescope or a spyglass. Oh, okay. I pull it out. Do you use it? I use it. What do you look at first? Just the Mazis. room in general, as usual? No, Mazis himself. You look at Mazis himself, and you do not see this version of Mazis. You see a sleeker, golden version, similar to the knights you've seen. But sleeker, not as bulkily built. It looks actively like a skeletal version of a body. It's got bronze and silver, like, embroiderment. It's very ornament. And there's a large blue crystal with a huge crack or two, like, embedded where a face would be. 
And you can see the room has less notes and more piles instead of scattered notes. Oh boy. Anything in particular about the room? The room just looks less messy than it does now. There's still there's piles of papers. It still looks to be a planning or a a note room of some kind. And, oh, well, I guess, other than, you know, instead of messes of piles on the floor, there's stacks of paper. Everything looks semi-organized. There's still, like, the big plans unfolded everywhere. And the three figures on the wall, none of them are circled or crossed out, but they are drawn on the wall. Okay. Uh... I just relate uh, everything to the Crate Phantom. So... I'm pretty good at confinement spells. Are you trapped in something? Do you, do you think I can help? I'm a wizard. The emanating light from Mazis's helmet will kind of blip in and out a little bit. I am trapped in this form. My consciousness was transferred. We used... Taurus, the plan was a machine. Yes, it stumbles over to a large pile of papers and starts sorting through and begins to hold up like etchings and like blueprints of some sort of humanoid form or figure. Machines to, to be controlled off the battlefield to prevent casualties during war. No one, no one, no one liked it. I used myself as the test subject. I was trapped. I must, I must return. I must fix uh, the, I must fix kind of drops the papers and looks down to its hands. It's not the same. I walk over to Mazis. I pick up the papers. I put them back in his hand. And I say, whatever we can do, I'll at least try to help. It ca you believe it's looking at you. It immediately drops the papers and stands up. And not as sharply, but it puts another grip on your shoulder. And begins to pull you out of the room. Okay. Oops, I'm stuck. Get off. Thank you. It does ah. not grab Crate Phantom. He just kind of looks like, okay. Kind of quickly follows. Same deal through the rat room. No rats are stepped on, but they are certainly... What is this? Mm-hmm. It goes in through an opposite door. you had passed by in this room previously. Mazis once again steps in front of the door. He does not touch it, and it opens, revealing a hallway which would have led behind the puzzle door. You are at an intersection where to your left is the large puzzle door. 
And to the right is another large grandiose door. You are pulled around the corner and you are immediately met with this secondary large door. Written across the front of it in the familiar scrolls you've seen everywhere is just hell. As the door very heavily and very slowly begins to open, sliding up into the ceiling as all the others. You are quickly pulled in as the door is being shut behind you. And you are met with quite an interesting, chaotic, and disturbing scene all at once as a large room now comes into view. Oh my. It stops like before and kind of half shoves you in front of it. Great Phantom just barely making in the door behind you. Alright. I'm going to explain what I think I need to explain, then feel free to pick everything apart. You are ushered into a large room. You can tell there are four large doors similar to the one you've just walked through. You believe this is the boss room, the big final room, the puzzle room, whatever you want to call it, the big end room you were looking to get into. The room is somewhat circular in nature, still with angular protrusions and these elaborate cuts into the metals of the floors, the walls, and the ceilings. It is a domed ceiling. In the middle of the room, you instantly see a large, similar cosmic stone about the size of, oh, a, a large beach ball that is hovering about the middle of the room that is almost set perfectly atop a spire of these blue crystals that seem to be growing semi out of the floor and almost making a perfect perch for this cosmic stone to land on. There are several chunks of these large crystalline forms just rocketing out of the ground every here and there. The room is busy. You can see several pylons floating about. About four large um, silver, or at least silver-colored knights or suits of armor. Two in the respective corners of the room. A third one on the far end. You see a fourth one lifting up a dead tree and literally feeding it into this rock which it is dematerializing and like literally disappearing before it touches this cosmic rock. There are several large, almost pallet-like stones, similar to the metal rocks you saw in the previous room, floating about in a semi-orbit. And you see about a handful of the regular golden knights attempting to lift a tree, one of these fallen logs, and usher it around the room. Two other things to note, there is a what appears to be a trap door of some kind, or a hatch, in the ceiling about here, and a large collection of downed trees over to the side. Now feel free to pick apart everything. No, I'm sorry. First off, I want you to roll perception real quick. Okay. I apologize. One perception roll. I know this is a lot to take in. That Yeah, it is a lot. I got 10 plus 5, 15. All right. Elric, upon scanning the room, you notice a familiar figure. Mr. Metal-Armed Man himself. Standing upon a one of the floating rocks, hovering just outside of the reach of this cosmic rock. He is as far as you can tell, about to snab, snatch this rock. Thaddeus, what are you doing? He stops and immediately takes it aback, looks over and sees the four of you. You are almost pushed aside as well as pushed apart from the child as Mazza stomps forward and just points at 
Thaddeus. Thaddeus is kind of in shock. You see Mazis's light blink very rapidly and just hear uttered forth from its form, Kill him!